Great and merciful God, we thank you for who you are, and we bless your name for this day. We bless your name for your word. Yes, for your word. For your living word. For your spoken word. Your word that lives in our hearts. We say thank you. And for that blessed word that we long to hear, well done. We yet long. We long to hear it. So between here and that blessed moment, hold us ever closely to you. Continue to speak into our hearts and to our lives that we might be the people that you have called us to be. I saw how y'all were moving when the temptations came on. <laughs> so that lets me know you know how to clap your hands and stomp your feet and say amen. So don't get quiet and all sanctified and sedity up in here. Somebody was trying to get the electric slide going in the, in the middle of the... Don't put your head down now. I saw you. I saw you. You were trying to, trying to get the electric slide going in the middle of the church house. Amen now. You know, had Darren not been blocking away, I would have joined you. But, you know, that's we'll try next time. We will try it next time. We'll do it up on the hill at our Mount Vernon site. We'll do it over the weekend at our Mount Vernon site. When I was in high school, I did a very bad thing, y'all. A very, very bad thing. I, I took some pills out of my grandmother's medicine cabinet. I did. I took them out. I took them out. I sure did. I took them out and I, I put them in my pocket. I didn't take all of them. I just took some of them, right? I just took some of them and I put them in my pocket and I took them to school with me. I, I hope you're praying because I'm telling you something right now. I put them in my pocket and I took them to school with me and, and one of my good friends, I mean good, good friend. Anybody got a good, good friend? You know that friend that'll do pretty much anything you'll do and just be right there with you and will and tell a lie for you. Woo! We'll tell a lie for you. Yeah, that kind of friend. They meant that get rid of those friends. But anyway, in high school, I had that friend. And I got to school and I had my pills and I mean my pills. I had my grandmother's pills in the pocket. And I said, look what I got. He said, well, what are those? I said, they say they muscle relaxers. He said, ooh, that's good. He said, give me one. So I gave him one. And I took one. We went on the class. He went to his class, I went to my class. So then, you know, we went through first period and there we were at the lockers. He came back to the locker. His locker was right next to me. You know, your best friend's locker got to be next to your locker, right? So he came back to his locker. And he said, that, that didn't do nothing. Give me another one. I said, all right. So I gave him another one. Now, I didn't take another one. Because I had geometry, so I couldn't, couldn't mess around with, with, with that. So, and so I'm sitting in geometry, and then there comes a knock at the door in the middle of class, and the office aide, who is a, another friend of mine, uh, asked the teacher if he could speak with me, and she said, why? He says, well, uh, they need to uh, get a message to him from the office. She said, okay, you know, hurry up. So I went out in the hall, and he said, man, he said, whatever you gave, uh, well, I have to change his name, because he's still uh, <laughs> Whatever you gave Rodney, like, uh, they want to know what it is, because he's in the office, and he told them you gave him something. <laughs> and I was like, uh-oh. So we ran up to my office and I took the pills out and I gave them to my friend who was working in the office or whatever. And I went back to geometry class and I sat down like having a thing in the world happened, right? A few minutes later, knock at the door. She was like, come in, it's my friend again. And she says, you know, he says to her, says to the teacher that uh, Mr. Owens needs to see him in the office. Mr. Owens was the principal. Mr. Owens needs to see him in the office. She said, good. And so I got up, I go to the office there. I was like, well, what are they talking about? He's like, I don't know. I've been trying to listen. I can't really figure it out, but they are upset, and they want you, and they want you now. And so we go to the office. I uh, walk into the principal's office, and my friend, uh, what's, what was his name? Rodney. 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 My friend Rodney is sitting in, the, uh, sitting in the chair, and he's sitting there like this. And I walk in, and I see him, 
and the assistant principals over there, our coaches, our football coaches right here, and the uh, main principal sitting at the desk. And I look at them, and I'm like, oh, they got me, they got me, they got me. And so I see Rodney sitting there slumped over, and I was like, oh, Rodney, what's wrong with you? What happened? Oh, my goodness. What is wrong with you? I mean, I was concerned about Rodney. I didn't know what had happened to Rodney. And they were like, sit down. We know you gave him something. And I was like, I mean, he, he said he had a headache this morning. I gave him some aspirin. I mean, that's, that's all I know. And I played this thing up, right? And we went on and on and on. He just sitting over in the thing. And I'm like, oh my goodness. And so, so anyway, so they're like, you're gonna tell us, you know, what you gave him. I'm like, I gave him aspirin. That's, that's a, well, where'd you get the aspirin? Well, I got him from home. Oh, did you? Okay, well, we'll call your mom and we'll ask her what kind of aspirin you had. Now, I don't know what kind of mama you had, but mine wasn't the one that you wanted called, right? And I was like, no, 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 no. Actually, I got them from my cousin there. That's where I got them from. I remember now. I got them from my cousin there. They had had just about enough, so they were like, you know what? Here's the thing. We're suspending both of you until your parents can come up here and we can get to the bottom of this. Now this was Friday. And I said, oh, okay, no problem. Now they did a dumb thing, now that I think about it, is they let me drive him home. We'll come back to that. But we left, we go, you know, we go, go to my house and, you know, get him kind of sobered up, if you will for a little bit, and then I took him home, and I went on about my weekend as though not, none of that had transpired. Mm -hmm. And then Sunday night, I got to think. They said, y'all can't come back to school until your parents come up here and we sort this out. So I waited till my mom went in her room, and when she turned the little lamp on, I knew she was praying, and so I let her get her prayer time done because I knew she'd be in a good mood after her evening prayer time. And when she finished her prayer time, I went in and, and I said, Mama, I, I got something to tell you. She said, what? I said, well, for some reason, <laughs> they suspended us on Friday. She said, us? I said, me and um, Rodney. Rodney. They suspended us on, on Friday and they said we can't come back to school until y'all come up there and straighten it out. She said, well, what did y'all do? I said, we didn't do anything. I said, I, I gave him some aspirin and then he went to class. Oh, did I tell y'all he was in typing class on muscle relaxers? So, so this is why that wasn't working out. And, so, and I said, and he went to class and then, you know, they think I gave him something and whatever. I said, so, you know, I'm not real sure. I said, but they just want you to come up there and tell them that I didn't do that. And then they'll let us back in, back in school. She looked at me and she said, mm-hmm. <laughs> Turn my light off. I said, all right. And I went to bed, you know, got up the next morning. I said, cool, she buying it, she bought it, we're good. And so we get to school and we go in the office and we walk in the office. Rodney's mom is in there. My mom and Rodney's mom went to high school together, so they knew each other, right? So they go, hey girl, how you doing? I'm all right, girl. I'm good. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Rodney's mama goes right back to crawling the principal. I mean, crawling him. I mean, Rodney's mama was one of those, my son didn't do anything. I don't know why you have my son in here. My son would not do anything to break any of these rules we got here. Blah, 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 blah. And my mom's just sitting there just as calm and quiet. I'm like, how did she jump in this? Why did she jump in this? I mean, come on, come on, come on. And so Rodney's mom is just going and going and going and going and going. And, going. and then eventually the principal gets her quiet. And then the principal turns to, uh, to my mom and he explains what they think happened that I gave him some, some substance of some sort that he was impaired on Friday. And so that was the reason that they sent us home. And she said, oh, okay, well, let me tell you something, Stolens. If you think he's in here doing drugs, selling drugs, or know where the drugs are, call the police. <laughs> Don't call me off my job. Call the police. <laughs> now y'all do whatever y'all want to with him. I am going to work. And she picked up her purse and walked out of that office. <laughs> Had I gone to jail that day, 
I did not. I got to go on the class. <laughs> and I never did that again. Because have you ever been half killed? Have you ever been half killed? Yeah, my mama half killed me when I got home that day. Prison probably would have been a better option. But I say all that to say, that had I gone to jail that day, or had I continued down that path and ended up in prison, I'm certain that behind those bars, the last thing on my mind would have been writing a letter to the church, telling the church how to live. I'm certain that from behind those bars, I would not have been thinking about telling the church how good God had been. I may have prayed, show sure not prayed, but that would have been for me to get out. I would have prayed, I would have shown up prayed for somebody to be gathering bail and finding me a good lawyer so that I could move on. I would not have written a letter to the church, but Paul did. And so this letter to the church at Ephesus that we have here, we started in it on last week, and we looked in Ephesians chapter 1 where Paul scripted one of two prayers that's contained within this great letter. And on last week, we talked about what it is to build up in prayer, to have prayer as a foundation of who we are and as a part of our walk with the Lord. Today we shift and we talk about what it is to live in prayer. To have prayer to be a living and active part of our very being. And we'll do this by going through this text here. Normally I just kind of just give you the overview and you know hope you get it as you go. But I'm, I'm going to walk you through because I want you to see this. I want you to see it in the text because when you leave here today, I want you to leave knowing that you got something that will hold you, something that will carry you, keep you from taking your grandmother's pills out the medicine cabinet, keep you from having folk around you who will lie for you just to lie for you, keep you from lying just to be lying. Amen? Keep you from disrupting other people's lives because of the crazy this you institute. See, I didn't come to talk about you. Amen? Amen. See, I told my own story. I told my own story. I told my own story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Rodney's, right? Rodney's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So in this text here, in Ephesians 3, Paul says, at verse 14, this is why I kneel before the Father. Basically, this is why I pray. I pray so that every ethnic group in heaven or on earth is recognized by him. Paul is saying that I am praying to God so that all of you know that who you are comes out of who God is. Connecting us with that great Genesis story that reminds us that we were created and crafted in God's image and in God's likeness. So regardless of what we see when we look around, beloved, what, should, what, should we, what we should be trying to see is what God created. Not what we want to see, but can we see whom God created? Amen? Paul wants us to know that no one is excluded from God's grace and God's love. Why? Because God created every single one of us in God's own image and in God's own likeness. Who we are emanates from who God is. And so he prays his prayer. And there are four things that he prays for. Four things that he prays for. First, verse 16, I ask that he will strengthen you in your inner selves from the riches of his glory through the Spirit. The first thing is he prays that God will strengthen you. Anybody need strength? Amen. Anybody need strength? He prays that he will strengthen you, but that he will strengthen you in your inner self. He's 
not concerned about these muscles. I mean, you know, Pastor got a few, but that's not what this is about. Amen. <laughs> He's praying that he will strengthen you from your inner being, your core, because it's out of your inner being that those words come. It's out of your inner being that those thoughts are formed. It's out of those inner beings that those actions show forth. So if your inner being is strengthened, you'll probably be a little less concerned about what everybody else thinks. You can probably spend a little less time on trying to just make it pretty so everybody else likes it. <laughs> the question is, do you like it? Do you love it? Do you like and do you love what God created? Do you like, do you love who God created you to be? So he prays that Christ will strengthen you in your inner being. Ah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, y'all want the long version. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the first thing he prays is that Christ will strengthen you. The second thing he prays is that Christ will live in you. In verse 17, it says, I ask that Christ will live in your hearts through faith. Now, you may not fully believe that Christ died for you. You may not believe that he intercedes on your behalf. You may not believe that you can be healed, that you can be set free or forgiven. For some of you to hear those things, it sounds like utter foolishness. But I say to you in your own mind and of your own intellect, most of this is foolishness. That's why it requires faith. That's why believing in Jesus Christ, believing in God in Jesus Christ requires faith. You cannot intellectualize yourself to make it sense how a man came, how a being came from heaven, appeared in the form of a man, lived sinlessly on this here earth with these here folk, died on a cross, went down on a, in a grave, and got up on the third day with all power in his hands. Oh, but somebody at Grace United Methodist Church today can testify with a certain assurance that he lives, amen, and that he lives in you. And you don't get there by intellectualizing. You don't get there by trying to make sense of it. You get there by faith in your way to it, believing that because you couldn't see it, and now you have seen it, believing that you couldn't feel it, and now you do feel it, you couldn't know it, and now you do know it, you understand that that's faith in action. Amen? Faith in action. And when we pray, that is a living expression of our faith. So when you come to me and you like, you say, Pastor, I just, I just don't have any faith. I just don't have any faith. Pastor, I don't have any faith. And I just look at you. I don't have any faith. <laughs> and I say, well, 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 do you pray? Yeah, I pray. I pray. I pray to God. I pray. I pray. I don't have any faith. Well, there's a contradiction. Because to pray, to say our Father requires faith and believing that he is. To say Almighty God requires faith to believe that he is. To say my healer requires faith. To say my deliverer requires faith. To say the God of many names requires faith. Why? Because God has many expressions. Yeah. Many of us have seen them. Many of us have experienced them. Many of us have called on them. Amen? Yeah. So it requires faith. So even if you just make up in your mind that I'm going to pray, beloved, that is your faith being activated. So don't let the enemy rob you. I don't have any faith. <laughs> but I pray. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
That's good right there. That's good. That's good. Oh, that's good. So he prays in this prayer, y'all. He prays that he will strengthen you. He prays that he will live in you. And then number three, he prays that he will empower you. Look at this, verse 17, as a result of having strong roots in love. I ask that you will have the power to grasp love's width, height, length, and depth together with all believers. He prays that he will empower you. Strengthen you, live in you, empower you. Back, back when I worked youth camps, way, way back, way, 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 way back when I worked youth camps. There was this worship chorus we used to sing. It was, how long and how wide is the love of Christ? When I was on mission in Botswana, the children sang a song, God's love is so big, so mighty, so awesome. There's nothing my God cannot do. Amen. Now that's a word, amen. Nothing that my God cannot do. At the Pentecostal church, Pastor Adrian, that I, that I used to attend when I was in Cheyenne, Wyoming, they sang this song that said, God's got a way that you can't go over. God's got a way that you can't go other. You can't go around. You must come in at the door. Mm -hmm. What I learned was that that way that God had was, was love. A love that, that never ends. That's the way. A love that, that covers all my sins. A love that is not depleted when you also receive it. A love that knows no bounds. A love that mends broken hearts. A love that pays ransom for fallen souls. A love that sees what you do in the dark and loves you back into light. That's the power that he prays that we will all have. And it's that power that comes from God's love. We invest so much in trying to get other people to love us. Come on. We abandon our families and abuse our bodies trying to get somebody else to love us. Yeah. Mm. What we're called to is to love who God created. And there's no way for us to say that we love God when we don't love who God created. You see that? Because we were created by God and created in God's image and in God's likeness. Which is to say that we were all created in love. Created for love. Somebody would have told me that that day when I opened my grandmother's medicine cabinet. That you're worth more than this. Trying to be popular is worth so much less than you just simply acknowledging the love of God and the love of who God created. So he prays that he'll strengthen you. He prays that he'll live in you. He prays that he'll empower you. And number four, he prays that he will fill you. Verse 19, I ask that you'll know the love of Christ that is beyond knowledge so that you will be filled entirely with the fullness of God. Do you know what God is full of? God is full of love. So he prays that we will be full of love. This love that cannot be contained in books. This love that is not determined by you. This love will never be taken from you. This love will never fail you. This love will never misunderstand you. This love will never abuse you. This love will never start rumors about you. This love will, is for you. And this love comes to us and is lived out day by day as we encounter Christ. And the most powerful way that we can encounter him is through prayer. Being in conversation with him. Acknowledging that we know he is present and he is more powerful than we will ever be individually or collectively. 
And look at this, the writer here from the depths of a prison cell <laughs> closes this prayer in this chapter with a grand declaration and promise that we can stand on. It says, glory to God who is able to do far beyond all that we could ask or imagine by his power at work within us. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus for all generations, forever and ever. Amen. God is able to do far beyond what we can think. That doesn't mean we stop thinking. Amen? Amen. It doesn't mean the intellect is of no use. It just means it doesn't supersede what God can do. It says it can do far more than we could think or imagine. That's not to say that we don't have dreams or we don't have visions, that we don't try to look beyond what we're, what we're capable of. Amen? But we, can, but we do look beyond what we're capable of because it's in that great beyond of what we're capable of that we encounter this great grace and love of God at work. Remember we've said week after week in various iterations. If you can solve the problem... Solve the problem. If you can think the thought, then think the thought. If you can imagine it and see it come to pass, then God bless you. That's just something for you to do. But if you can think it and imagine it, but don't know how to get from here to there, don't have the means to get from here to there, you start praying yourself from here to where you can get to, and you keep praying because God will take it from wherever that is to where God needs you and or it to be. And ain't a devil in hell or on earth that can stop that from happening. Amen? God wants to strengthen you, to live in you, empower you, and fill you. And that'll happen through your Open your worship guides to page four, please. I told you, I want you to leave with something you can use. Page four. It's very practical. Very practical. And what you have here is a prayer, and it's modeled on what we just went through from Ephesians chapter three, verses 14 through 21. You see, you see it? What does it say right there in the middle of the page? Grace is prayer. Uh, grace is prayer. And we're going to offer this to you for you to take with you. See, I know where you're sitting, so I'm going to check the pews. If your bulletin is still there, I'll know you didn't take it. All right? <laughs> and I'm going to write your name down so that when you call the office or you come by, you know, moaning and groaning about something, I'm going to remind you of the day that we gave you this prayer and you chose to leave it sitting on the pew. But if you look down about two lines over in the right, you'll see where it says fill in the blank. You see that? Mm -hmm. When we get there, we'll pause. And right there, that's where you fill in the name of whoever it is you're praying for. You can pray this for yourself. You can pray this for your parents, for your children, for your neighbors, for your schools, your job. Definitely pray for your boss. Or your wannabe boss. So let's pray this together. I join with other members of the Grace family and pray to God, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of God's glorious riches, God may strengthen. Rodney. With power through God's Spirit in their inner being, so that Christ may dwell in their hearts through faith. And I pray that they, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people 
to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that they may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to the one who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to God's power that is at work within us, to God be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. I invite you all to stand at this time. And again, we said we wanted you to leave today with something you could use. And that's something you can use. Not something we made up. But something God delivered to us right out of God's word. So we commend that prayer to you. 